Hey, what's up to KBA? One Tech Traveler here. This is Last Shelter, and you're joining me in Season 6 Hero Drop 4. It's been a lot of action here on Eden Conflict. We've just taken our first at Capital Level 6, helping the greater good of our 7th faction. So now that that action's out of the way, we can focus on this week's Hero Drop. Um, just a reminder and a recap of the previous Hero Drops. Again, this is uh, the fourth week where we are seeing Hero Batches of 7. So the first two weeks were the smaller drops of four, and this is the second round of seven heroes. Uh, there are like core or headline heroes that are featured in each one of them, with Lust being the first drop and also the new hero for the season. Then it was Retro, and then we had last season's headliners, which were Prophet, and this week it is Huntress. Uh, here we have them. Uh, so we knew it was Huntress, and last week I kind of deduced that there was a pattern emerging which was basically taking half of the heroes from Hero Drop 1 and Hero Drop 2, placing them in uh, Hero Drop 3 and 4, and then the, remained, the remaining half in 5 and 6. So last week, it was Prophet that featured in Drop 1, alongside a Shadow. This week, it is Huntress, and it was kind of either or Scarlet Siren and Predator. Kind of was hoping it was Predator, but Again, it makes sense. They've gone to balance out with Huntress and Scarlet Siren. So uh, predictions were correct, which means that we will see Retrograder and Predator in week six. So uh, very exciting stuff. And uh, yeah, we're going to dive into this hero drop, see what it looks like. Previous recap, hero drop one, Lust, Wrath, Shadow, Prophet. Drop two, we had Retro, Huntress, Siren and a Predator. Drop three, we had Pro uh, Prophet, Nomad, Death Rider, Crusher, Patriot, Sentinel and Shadow. And then finally, we have Huntress, Scarlet Siren, Rose Noir, Lone Wolf, Kamikaze, Koshe, and Hunk. So uh, while we kind of knew two out of the seven, uh, the five is actually quite surprising. Um, again, I kind of didn't know what to expect that we will see here. And overall, the waiting is looking pretty good. So um, yeah, let's uh, firstly talk about the, the visual. They kind of play between more of like a, a, a darker or a blue hue and then more of this sort of like orangey uh, hue similar to like Retrograder. But of course, we have the really awesome uh, Warriors in Huntress headlining this. Super dope. Um, and then we have Siren, Rose Noir, and then Kamikaze just featured into the back. So uh, definitely putting a lot of the, the ladies into the forefront. But um, yeah, this is looking super strong. In terms of the overall quality here, um, again, that's always going to... Be either higher or lower depending if you already have these heroes um, the overall like generally I would give it an, a quality ranking of A I think is actually very good uh, the, the risk here is low it's not as low as say the Huntress one that was a hero drop of four and uh, you know there was obviously really good ones here so uh, in terms of a seven hero compared to last week it fares a little bit better I would say than Hero Drop 3. That one featured heroes that were kind of made redundant whereas here you're generally getting a very solid overall average and then the weakest link being Lone Wolf. So while the probabilities are low of getting kind of like a bad hero, if you do land a Lone Wolf of course that sort of really drops it down but overall here the quality is super high so in terms of the top picks or reasons why you want to go into this of course headline is Huntress if you do already have Huntress it's a really good one worth dipping your tickets into uh, she will be that alternative to Death Rider, Captain Ivanov um, just any sort of vehicle back row damage dealer so if you are lacking that then this is a good one to go for if you already dropped in last week's with death rider and so then unless you're really fleshing out your vehicles or have a good combo that you can set with other heroes you have aside um then huntress is less important here but then the weighting is more towards Ko uh, kamikaze so 
personally, I would say the top uh, picks are probably, let's say, two slash three. So Huntress, Kamikaze, and Siren. Siren being if you already have her or not. Um, she is, like, say, the pretty much the best offensive like damage dealers for fighters. So I would generally put them in the in the top bracket. And then we have quality heroes, which is Koshe and Rose Noir. Hunk will be moving up and down that sort of level, depending if you have him or not, or the combos in mind. But generally, I would place Hunk. Uh, let's put him in the in the quality section. But objectively, he would be more in the the solid if you don't have heroes around. And then finally, Lone Wolf just being kind of the decent, not great hero, kind of redundant. So um, the general quality here is very nice. You got good odds for picking those top heroes, and it really is a question if these heroes are the ones that you want to go for. So let's go ahead and dive into them. So if you saw in Hero Drop 2, which is uh, definitely an awesome drop that you should be pulling your tickets if you are targeting uh, Huntress. Um, she's uh, just a, is a much smaller odds drop and the heroes there were really awesome. So definitely look to, to pick in that one. Here is the second chance for us to get Huntress and I've been running her um, three out of the, the four, three out of the four copies before she's maxed. She's amazing. Um, again, if you are lacking an alternative to say Captain Ivanov or Death Rider, um, she is an excellent top quality pickup, more of a specialist focus type of damage dealer. But again, she's really hard to deal with, especially if you've got those that up her offensive capabilities or just surround her with um, other healers or support heroes. Um, she's gonna cause a lot of problems. So yeah, in terms of her damage, really good. Uh, what makes her different from all the others is her focused damage for three turns. So you'll primarily find her Wild Pounce, which has a 50% chance and does a good damage, 350%. But there's also an additional 50% chance to trigger one turn suppression where they cannot basic troop or combat skill damage. So that averages out to 25% of that suppression occurring from this skill. Uh, her biggest one is Deadly Claws. Uh, this one is insane, 35% chance, which is uh, pretty good. It will trigger a couple of times in a turn eight battle. 600% bonus damage, and yeah, that's very solid in itself. But there's also an increased damage dealt if the enemy troops is less than half of what they started with. That amps it up to 810%, which is crazy. It's a five range, so wherever you place her, she's going to hit. And of course, the first three turns, she will hit the position where she is in the enemy side. So if she's in the back row, she will always hit it in the, in the back row. After that, she can sort of spray anywhere. Mostly it will be towards the, the front, um, but the amount of damage that this deals is crazy. Really nice, uh, she can be countered and she loses her effectiveness after turn three in terms of just being able to kill off those rows. But if you really amp up her offensive capabilities, like Anna Predator, which I've been experimenting for a while, really killer. Um, and yeah, just gonna be deadly against the majority of combos, uh, bar a few that is able to counter that APC or her. Um, so she's definitely a top pick and uh, yeah, really top class vehicle alternative if you didn't have Death Rider uh, and it's an upgrade from Captain Ivanov, but they generally have their good placings for different APCs you wanna run. Next up, we have Scarlet Siren. Um, so she is, again, the, the best sort of offensive damage dealer for fighters. She is a combination of and the Knight and Iron Guard that I mentioned previously, where she attacks multiple times, uh, five in one of her skills. And that also triggers a, a kind of like a counter dependent on what troops they are running. So here, five times 150 percent damage roughly 800 percent total each one of those have a chance to trigger either disarm or silence for fighters vehicles or shooters and if that five times ends up landing on a hero twice and the 
and the counter wants to trigger, then it will stack for up to two turns. So it won't just be a one turn, it will actually increase the length, which is really nice. This is her guaranteed like high consistency, low damage. So 100% chance, guaranteed. Uh, it is a combat skill, so unless she's countered, she will always trigger this and deals 100% damage. Uh, the meteor part of this is that 40% chance of dealing 500% 500% damage to the lowest troop count, so akin to like Iron Guard. Um, this part is, is what helps, and it is overall just a 40% chance, so it should trigger fairly frequently. Uh, you primarily want Scarlet Siren in the bag um, just because she's more combat skill minded and a damage dealer, but again, depending who you come across now, it's not always set in stone that you should have your damage dealer in the bag. I generally put them in the mid now, um, just because, yeah, with other support acts and if you're against count, uh, Huntress, then it can keep them alive. But yeah, just some ideas there. Uh, Wave the Flame is that burning, like guaranteed set of triggering a burning effect onto the enemy. So we can see our turn one, four, and seven. It is for two turns. Deals 150% damage on each turn, which is uh, pretty good but there's also a nice 30% countering against vehicles, so it amps up um, her effectiveness on when fighters are against vehicles. And then also a big one here is that plus 50% skill damage against burning targets. So because this is a prep skill, it is automatically going to trigger any sort of uh, skill damage is gonna amp up that output as well. Um, this is going to set it on two random enemies, so if they land well, it can really do some nice damage and also opens up some nice hero synergy between those that do burning or take advantage of burning, um, like Inquisitor, Hunk, Executioner, or just, you know, more of your traditional damage dealer for fighters or mixed. So that's Scarlet Siren, really like her. Um, again, she's top tier. There's not that much competition for offensive fighters in the back row so um, while she isn't like as inherently stronger than Huntress Death Rider um, she's still very strong and for fighters she is the top one there and then we have a Rose Noir so Rose Noir is still a very good quality pickup if you don't say have Nomad um, she is also going to play well with those that are focused on basic troop attacks so like predator koshe those that amp up uh, troop attacks um so yeah if you don't have nomad or you already have copies of rose noir then this is going to up the like appeal of this hero drop she gains one mark of pursuit for each normal attack that your squad deals when it reaches seven it deals 400 percent in damage and then removes all existing marks so I like this one because it's going to deal 400% to all of the enemies. That's 1,200%. Very nice. If you are amping up the amount of basic troop attacks that she can deal, whether it's Ana, Predator, Koshe, um, she's going to trigger this more often and becomes potent. Stealth combo. Combat skill, 35% chance to have one additional normal attack each turn lasting for two turns so this one is really nice again she's kind of self buffing to increase her basic troop attack frequency again you amp that up with other heroes like yeah she could be really awesome and an alternative to say nomad huntress cinemix um obviously if you want to just get creative in combos so she definitely can have a place um nomad sort of eclipses her because they are both their styles are very similar um, but Rose Noir is still very good quality back row hero nonetheless. And then finally is uh, Fatal Erosion. Uh, this one is quite interesting. She's one of maybe two heroes that have, three heroes that have more of like a lottery draw of what skills they can apply out of a few options. So like Shadow and Betrayed. Here we have three one two nope not three here we have um just basically different counters that she can apply uh for every two normal attacks so again amp up that frequency you unlock more from her and it's basically just being able to apply a counter 
it's arm silence confuse interrupted which is like a channel disruption similar to s4 venom walker and a troop recovery block i'm assuming that's 100 percent block um kind of like the same naming convention they use for countdown then that one is generally very strong when you're up against high healers um pro probability is determined independently so there's not like a causal effect of increasing a, pro a probability if you are activating one more it's just yeah kind of level whatever um it only lasts for one turn there's no stacking ability so that would have made this really strong but nonetheless it is still super solid so that is rose noir and again options is Placing her with Predator, um, she plays well basically in shoot, typical shooter formations, um, but that same combo, Anna, Predator, Rose Noir, it's also going to work. You can amp her up with Koshe and um, Predator because Koshe also has that chance to increase basic troop attacks and it's also very nice because we also see him in this drop. Uh, next up we get to Lone Wolf and again Lone Wolf is just kind of that lowest baseline in this drop. Um, she just she's kind of that much lesser quality of what Scarlet Siren provides but really there's there's no comparison. Um, she's just not going to be able to do that much. Um, but hey, you know, for Eden, if you need that high destruction power and you get a few copies, like wow, it's not a hero that you want in here. Um, you can still sideline her too when you need high destruction of those buildings. Kind of what I do with my run Wanderer. Actually, maybe not even my Wanderer because yeah, it just does nothing. Uh, at least here, Lone Wolf has some offensive capabilities. So she has a guaranteed trigger every time besides getting countered because this is a combat skill. Um, she doesn't attack, like she kind of disarms herself like Predator or Countdown and instead gives a 30% increased damage for two turns and deals 280% damage. It's okay. Um, of course, the other heroes that I mentioned, they, the, the trade-off is much better outweighed than what Lone Wolf buffs herself with. I'm considering she's not really that strong to begin with. But that's Explosion Protocol, uh, Weakening Protocol, one turn prep, 45% chance, so deals fairly re uh, regularly. Um, this skill does have a nice uh, number to it, just under 1000% uh, for three enemies, so you can see at least she deals damage versus Wanderer that just, just hanging around. Um, so yeah, that skill is, is nice. And then we have Termination Protocol. Self squad countering to fighters and vehicle is increased by 30%. So again, like with Siren, it amps up the vehicles, uh, the fighters advantage of countering vehicles. Um, it is just for her squad, not a blanket one. So only when she is attacking vehicles that will go into effect. And then there's also a 70% chance each turn to ignore 50% of the base resistance so very high trigger chance most likely to land like nearly every turn unless it's just not triggering for the one or two percent that it's not going to happen and that's yeah pretty much the same like Huntress's skill 2 um, which basically ignores half of the base resistance first return first three turns it doubles that so and um, this is just a straight 50% no sort of playing around for the end of battle so this part uh, does help and uh, yeah that's kind of it that's lone wolf uh, again she she's average um she's not one that excels in anything meaningfully um she definitely well she can fill up an apc when you need fighters uh, to go alongside it or yeah um in terms of combat or stuff just kind of very redundant it is the lowest baseline on here so she is the risk in this hero drop but Hey, I think, uh, yeah, depending on the other heroes you have, uh, this pull could be good. And then we have Kamikaze. Um, again, he's, yeah, he's a top vehicle hero, plays excellently. His healing rate is generally very solid. He does take quite a bit of damage. So even though his recovery rate, um, Bloodthirst is nice at 100%, it does heal himself and another. So he has really good like front row survivability. And then also healing another hero behind just to give more coverage versus say crusher that's only for himself um so that one is nice uh, but he does take more damage so he will kind of receive 
not more damage in terms of skills, but he will just take damage and then that high healing is going to kind of compensate that. Um, he heals roughly 10,000 troops uh, every time, provided his troop count is near full. That recur the amount of troops that he actually heals is going to go down if he has less troops in there. So just letting you know how that mechanic works. Um, one man legion, 40% chance to reduce 30% uh, damage taken for the self squad, which is very nice. Again, amping up his survivability and defense. And then it takes 30% damage from enemies of the two other friendly for two other friendly squads, two turns. So kind of siphoning 30% from the enemy, apply it to two of your friendly squads. This is nice of kind of like dulling down some of the really amped up offensive combos that we see and also just a way of yeah reducing or dulling the blade of damage that he would receive from them uh, while in a turn allowing your damage dealers to to deal more so that one's very nice and then finally his countering storm uh, i like his countering really solid it's 50 percent chance it does generally trigger frequently and it has a sort of a splash effect uh, from the front and then the second row doesn't hit the back um, but the damage that it also deals is really nice too so it's interestingly when they say it deals uh, this says 63% damage um, but the skill the, the damage generally is very strong so again he's the top tier front row vehicle hero with healing that you can get um, and definitely in terms of comparisons with Crusher just is much more versatile with his healing coverage um, and yeah definitely top pick in this drop and then we get to Koshe. Um so again I mentioned with Rose Noir Cro uh, she works well with Koshe. Uh, he is kind of going to be the successor to the front row shooters that we've had and it's kind of a combination of all of their skills to yeah give you a bit more defense and just provide more to your shooter formation works differently than say shadow and the alternatives like the six machina wings of liberty yeah i mentioned mentioned shadow um he's just got a little bit more in his arsenal more on the, the defensive type not really much on trying to counter or supportive effects but you'll see why he he is still very strong so here there's an 80 percent chance high frequency to reduce a damage by 20 percent uh, for two turns and the status is stackable which means it's always interesting when they say stackable is not really clear but here i would just assume that if the skill triggers again in the next turn then that two turns will continue to apply rather than just the, the fixed two turns that the initial one triggered either way minus 20 percent damage it's okay uh, but decent nonetheless ambush is nice 50% uh, chance to deal 310% damage the damage is reasonable um, but it's he recovers troops for himself 67% recovery rates this is passive so whereas this ex machina really good healing and coverage to the rest of the formation it is for three turns after that um, if you are sort of having high damage dealers then you're kind of exposed koshi is kind of to the end of battle it is passive so it cannot be countered and um, yeah just increases his resistance being in the front row to protect uh, the mid and the back a little bit longer and then finally we get to skill 8 bullet hail uh, this is the synergy skill right here 45% chance to make two random friendly squads attack twice and increase 30% damage for two turns. So yeah, the ability to increase that basic troop attack is just really going to bolster Rose Noir, Nomad, that extra damage, uh, the extra damage buff that Rose Noir gives herself and also for Nomad Crazy. Um, if you're looking for an all-out shooter formation and uh, yeah either have nomad or look happy to pick up rose noir in this drop then uh, you can kind of make a shooter hero right here um and then yeah you would just kind of fill him in with predator uh, she's super versatile very strong and again really amps up basic troop attacks so that is koshe and then finally we have hunk um so yeah hunk in isolation uh 
maybe isn't seen to be that good but he plays very strong in certain combos primarily with Predator and then again opens up the formation with Rose Noir here Nomad um, or all in fighters going heavy on the confuse with like Tech Priestess, Lust or just yeah extra high healing in, in fighter formations even with Scarlet Siren if you wanted to um, and then putting yeah Retrograder TP Canoness uh, for that alternative so um, he's good in the way if you are able to take advantage of his skills he has a 25% chance to evade which is nice um, it works well and again can really avoid sort of high damage and just increase his defensiveness and there's half a chance also to increase his squad damage by 50% um, he doesn't really do that much offensively um, so that squad damage to himself um, while being 50% is nice only is really taken advantage of when you have um, his later skills opened now Yeet is the nice synergy skill it's 30% chance so if it triggers right then it can capitalize well it is a combat skill so it can be countered and it's more exposed at the front but when it does it allows the two enemy squads to be confused and then also flammable status um, there's also a 50 percent additional burning damage and it lasts for two turns which is really nice so the confused and flammable again are really strong and repelling high damage but also reflecting it back to the enemies so that could be really nice the flammable status also can take advantage of by those like say i've run him with inquisitor it works well for trying to trigger that suppression state for two turns um also you know with scarlet siren on the heavy burning you can amp up that burning sort of frequency and damage so it's really stacking a lot and uh, yeah, you know, the fact it lasts for two turns also gives it a bit of longevity. So this skill is nice. And then finally, head on. First six turns, all friendly squads have 30%, 37 combat speed. And then half of the damage taken will be tallied on turn seven. Pre battle round, deal forge and 67% damage to two random enemy squads. So this skill I'm kind of not sure about more of the middle part, the 37 combat speed can help against those heroes that maybe don't have as much um, combat speed so that you can sort of let your friendly squads hopefully trigger first. There's obviously other variables in play but that amps it up a little bit. And then that uh, half the percent of the half of the damage taken will be tallied on turn 7 so I've always not really been sure what that actually translates into my assumption was that when it tallies it that it actually takes all of that to deal but if someone else can confirm down below that would be awesome what that tally thing actually does and then the pre-battle round deals forging 69 percent damage to two enemy squads very nice close to 1000 uh more around 950 and uh yeah that's pretty much hunk so overall that is hero drop Four. there's a lot of details in there but i kind of wanted to just give a refresh of all these skills because there are some heroes that haven't appeared for a while an a rating more of just the balance of top quality heroes and not necessarily that low of a, a baseline of the weak link in lone wolf the heroes around those even if you don't get your top picks are still very solid you can slide into apcs and combos if you dipped in earlier hero drops and it landed well um, but also they do have good opportunities to pair to come um, yeah thanks a lot for joining me team kba let me know down in the comment section if you have any questions around this uh, if you dropped in hero drop 4 let me know it'd be good to see how your picks fared the number of tickets which heroes you got and your rng and uh, yeah good luck if you are pulling next up is going to be our one tech traveler live show number seven so i'll see you there that wraps up the video. If you liked it, give a big thumbs up. If you haven't yet, join the Team KBA community by subscribing to my YouTube channel and check out onetechtraveler.com for more stories, articles, and videos around tech travel and gaming. I'll see you in the next one, but until then, keep being awesome. Peace.